I'm Charlton Heston. You know, one of the high points of my life is the birth of my grandson, Jack. He is a joy in my life. Perhaps you've been blessed with such joys of your own. Maybe you're even sitting next to one or two of them right now. If so, I'm sure you agree that the birth of a child is nothing less than a miracle. That, I think, explains the power behind the story of the Nativity. It's, on its most basic level, a story of birth as a symbol of hope. For Christians, of course, the young Jesus wasn't just another child. He was the Messiah, the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary so that mankind might be saved from its sins. Seen in that light, the story takes on even greater importance. That's why it's retold and performed as a pageant in churches throughout the world each Christmas season. But you don't have to be a Christian to appreciate this story. Its appeal is universal. The story, as told here and in the Gospel according to St. Luke, is actually an account of two births, that of John the Baptist as well as that of Jesus. The birth of John is an important part of the story because it's he who is destined to become the forerunner of Christ, the one who will announce the coming of the Messiah. But what makes this story so engaging is the account of the events surrounding the birth of Jesus himself. Now, if you were coming to this story for the first time, you might expect that Jesus, as the only begotten Son of God and an earthly descendant of King David, would be born into a position of high social standing. That's not the case, of course. Just the opposite is true. Jesus' earthly father, Joseph, is a lowly carpenter from a small town called Nazareth. And after he takes his wife Mary to Bethlehem so the two of them can be counted in a census, he's not even able to get a room in a local inn. Instead, he and Mary must sleep in a stable with the innkeeper's animals. That's where Jesus is born, in a manger on a bed of straw. It's hardly a setting worthy of the heir to the throne of David. Or is it? Jesus will inherit a kingdom, there's no doubt about that. But his will be the kingdom of heaven, which includes all of God's creation. That's why his birth in a manger is not at all inappropriate. It symbolizes his humility and his love of all things, great and small. God doesn't allow the birth of Jesus to go unnoticed, of course. He sends an angel to tell three shepherds of the good news and casts a bright star in the sky over Bethlehem to lead three wise men to the manger as well. Now, in Jerusalem at that time, there was a king named Herod who reigned with the support of the Roman Empire. And when he learns of the birth of Jesus, who's already been called a new king, he's angry. He even tries to have the newborn baby killed. He fails, of course. Jesus will grow to be a man, and he'll attract many followers. Many years later, he will be murdered as part of his destiny. But that's another story. For now, let's focus on the miracle of the birth of Jesus. Your guide as you journey to the Holy Land will be my friend Simon and his trusty camel Gimel. You'll meet them very shortly, and I think you'll like them as much as I do. Unfortunately, it's time for me to say farewell. But I'll see you again soon. Until then, peace be with you. In the days when Herod was king of Judea, there lived a priest called Zacharias. <laughs> Zacharias and his wife Elizabeth were good, faithful people getting on in years. Their one sorrow was that they had no children of their own. They thought it was too late. <sighs> wow. 
One day, it was Zachariah's turn to burn incense in the sanctuary. This was a great honor. Elizabeth will bear a son, and he will be called John. Your son will be one of God's great men. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit from the moment of his birth. He will turn many of Israel's children to the Lord their God. But, but this can't be true. I'm an old man, and my wife, she's well past childbearing age. I am an angel of the Lord, sent by God to deliver this good news. Because you doubt my word, you will be unable to speak until your son is born. What's taking Zachariah so long? There he is. Look at his face. Like he's seen a ghost. <laughs> As the angel said, Zacharias had lost his voice. Zacharias, what happened? Why can't you speak? What are you trying to tell us? Zacharias has seen a vision. And as the angel foretold, Elizabeth became pregnant soon after. Hey, Gimmel. Ever wonder why angels always say fear not when they first appear? An angel came to Zacharias, wings a flutter in a golden cloud. The angel said, you're a father to be, and your son will make you oh so proud. Zacharias gasped, Zacharias stared. He'd never seen an angel and he was scared. The angel said, don't be dismayed. There's no reason to be afraid. Angel said, rejoice instead, your wife will bear a baby boy, and he'll bring the world delight and joy. The angel said, rejoice instead, your wife will bear a baby boy, and he'll bring the world delight and joy. A baby boy, delight and joy. <laughs> Zacharias's wife Elizabeth had a cousin who lived in a town called Nazareth. Her name was Mary. <laughs> You're a lucky girl to be engaged to Joseph, Mary. He'll make a fine husband. I know. <laughs> oh, to be young again. <laughs> Young Joseph, Mary's husband-to-be, was a descendant of King David. And he worked as an apprentice at his father's carpentry shop. Good morning, husband-to-be. Good morning, wife-to-be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joseph, are you all right? Fine. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You should get back to work while you still have nine fingers left. <laughs> I'll see you after work, Mary. Uh, maybe later we can walk in the garden. I'll see you then, Joseph. <laughs>
rejoice, child of grace. The Lord is with you. You are blessed beyond all women. <laughs> Fear not, Mary. You have found favor in the eyes of God. Behold, you are to be a mother and to bear a son and to call him Jesus. He will be known as the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, King David. He will be king over the house of Jacob forever, and to his kingship there will be no end. But... How, but how can this be? I'm... Um... A, a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. For this reason, the child to be born will be acclaimed holy and the Son of God. Your cousin Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age, because with God, nothing is impossible. I am the humble handmaiden of the Lord. May all that you have told be fulfilled in me. appeared to Mary on a glittery cloud of angel wings. This angel brought fair Mary news. You'll give birth to the king of kings. Well, Mary gasped and Mary stared. she never seen an angel and she was scared. The angel said, my virgin maid, there's no reason to be afraid. The angel smiled. me? Was this real? Or just a dream? Oh, it can't be a dream. My eyes are wide open. What to do? Who do I tell? Of course, of course, I should tell Mother. No. No, if the angel wanted Mother to know, he would have come when she was here. It must be a secret. Yes. But, Joseph... Of course, Joseph must know. How can I hide this from him? But, but how do I tell him? How do I make him believe such fantastic news? A few days later, Mary went to visit Elizabeth. As the angel Gabriel foretold, Elizabeth was pregnant. Cousin! You're with child. Oh, Elizabeth, I'm so happy for you. Oh, Mary, it's so good to... <gasps> Elizabeth, are, are you all right? Blessed are you, Mary, beyond all women. And blessed is the child in your womb. You know? B but how? As you said hello, Mary, as the baby inside me leapt for joy. Happy is she who believed that what was told her on behalf of the Lord would be fulfilled. Because of Elizabeth's words, Mary's remaining doubts were put to rest. Without hesitation, she now believed everything the angel had told her. By the time Mary returned to Nazareth, she was three months pregnant. It was time to tell Joseph the news. Oh, I missed you terribly, Mary. I missed you too, Joseph. You left so suddenly, and then you were gone for three whole months. I worried something was wrong. Oh, Joseph, nothing is wrong. I had to help my cousin through her pregnancy. That's all. But you seem different somehow. I do? In what way? Is something wrong? Oh, Joseph, I love you now more than ever. Are you sure? With all my heart. And you, Joseph? Do you still love me? More than ever, Mary. And to think, I was so worried that things had changed. Mary searched Joseph's eyes, hoping he already knew her secret. 
Perhaps an angel had appeared to him to deliver the joyous news, but Joseph showed no sign of knowing. Joseph, I have important news, but I don't know how to tell you. You can tell me anything, Mary. I'm ready to listen to anything you have to say. I'm... I'm with child, Joseph. You can imagine how shocked and confused Joseph felt. Mary wanted to say so much, but her tongue was locked. I... I... I need some time to think about this. No, Joseph. Joseph didn't know it yet, but he was being tested. Why would Mary do this to me? My heart aches like never before. What should I do? If I break the engagement, I'll be required by law to explain my reason. If the priests learn Mary betrayed me, she'll be punished. I can't let anyone hurt Mary. Maybe we should go ahead with the wedding as planned. Maybe no one will notice her condition. You're right. Can't hide something like that. I know. We could postpone the wedding, and I'll send her away to have the baby in secret. Yes, yes, that's the best way to handle this. Betray me! Joseph. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The child within her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. You will call the son she bears Jesus, which means God saves, for he will save his people from their sins. It's the ancient prophecy come true. Joseph had passed the test. <laughs> Mary and Joseph were wed. And Joseph took Mary into his home. You look worried, Joseph. I was just thinking about the ancient prophecy. According to the elders, the king of kings is to be born in Bethlehem, not Nazareth. The only way you'll get me to Bethlehem in my condition is if you carried me there on your back. All the way to Bethlehem. And who would carry me? <laughs> Meanwhile in Rome, the Emperor Caesar Augustus held a council with his advisors. This can't be right. There should be much more than this. How can we be sure that taxes have been collected from all my subjects? <clears throat> Our problem is we only have a general idea of the population. There are so many provinces, Caesar, and the people speak different languages. We must begin counting them right away. <laughs> Hear ye, hear ye! By the imperial decree of Caesar Augustus, all subjects of the Roman Empire are hereby ordered to return.
return to the cities of their fathers and there be counted for the census. The census would create hardship for millions of people, but it was decreed by Caesar Augustus as law. When the news reached Nazareth, Joseph went to see the local tax merchant, hoping for an exception. Um, I, uh, a friend of mine, well, his wife, you see, is with child. Of course, Rome doesn't expect a woman in her condition to travel. Everyone must register for the census, even the lame and the blind. But... No exceptions, Joseph. It's the law. Yes, of course. We have no choice, Mary. Bethlehem is the city of my father, and we must both go to register for the census. Oh, but Joseph, it's so far away, and, and I'm almost ready to give birth. If we pace ourselves right, and the weather's with us, it should only be a five-day journey. But what if something happens in the middle of nowhere? Mary, you have been graced by God to bear the Messiah. Do you think God would let anything happen to his child? Of course not. Besides, we will be fulfilling the prophecy after all. Bethlehem was 90 miles south from Nazareth. Mary and Joseph's journey would be long and difficult, especially with Mary so close to giving birth. Good girl, Jackie. Good girl. Oh. oh, Joseph. Shall we stop and rest? No. The, the baby won't wait. We must move on. Here, drink. <laughs> Joseph? Uh, help take my mind off the pain. Let's think about all the glorious things to come. Tell me. Mary, you've been graced by God. Chosen and blessed above all others, the power that created the earth and all the stars in the sky conceived the child inside you. Will he be beautiful, Joseph? Oh, he will be so beautiful, Mary. The most beautiful child that ever was born. And we will take care of him so well, won't we? Yes. And God is with us right now. Do you feel him guiding us on our journey, beckoning us onward? Yes, Joseph. I feel him. He will keep us safe, Mary. I know he will. I, I feel better now, Joseph. At night, they slept in open fields, saving what little money they had for the baby. Joseph found themselves among a throng of pilgrims, peasants, and merchants. Jerusalem is just as the elders described, like a rare white jewel. Bethlehem is only five miles to the south now. Oh, we mustn't dawdle, Joseph. The baby's restless, and night is upon us. Wait. I just want one last look at the holy city. <sighs> Let's 
Let's carry on now. Joseph. Uh, I'll find a midwife to help with the delivery. There isn't time, Joseph. All I need is privacy. We must find a place right away. We don't need much space. Just something small and private. Sorry, but you're too late. We rented every cubit of space three days ago. We are so full. People are taking turns to sleep in the same bed. But, sir, you don't understand. My wife is about to give birth. Look around you, young man. Everyone's come to register for the census. People are sleeping in the fields, in the streets. If you'd come three days sooner... Please. We're desperate. My wife can't give birth on the street. Please, I beg you. Did you say your wife is having a baby? Don't get involved. If you'd like, you can stay in the cave below our inn. It's, it's not much. It's where we keep the animals. That's no place to have a baby. It's warm and it's private. And it's the only thing available. We'll take it. Thank you. Thank you. I can't believe it's come to this, Mary. Uh, oh, Joseph. Forgive me for failing you. You haven't failed me, Joseph. I couldn't ask for a kinder, more loving husband. But a stable, Mary? Why should we question God's wisdom if it is His will that His Son should be born here? <sighs> this will do just fine. I do. Stop worrying. Joseph waited outside, watching the sky. Suddenly, he saw a magnificent display.
What do you think it is? I don't know. I've never seen anything like it. shepherds in a glittery cloud of angel wings a child's been born in bethlehem the son of god the king of kings <gasps> the shepherds gasped the shepherds stared they'd never seen an angel and they were scared there's no reason to run and hide fear not the angel cried the angel said rejoice in Did you see what I saw? I don't know. What did you see? Admit it, we all saw it. Could it be true? Has the Son of God finally come? Why would the Son of God be lying in a manger? What is a manger? It's, you know, it's, it's the trough that animals eat grain from in a stable. Why would the Son of God be born in a stable? Surely he would be born in the great palace of Herod the king. We must go to Bethlehem and find out. Can you tell us where to find the Messiah? Messiah? What Messiah? Didn't you see the angels? Go away! At least tell us if you've heard about a newborn child. Leave us alone, you dirty shepherds! You stink of sheep. Hello? May we come in? I'll see who it is. Yes? We apologize for the intrusion. We've come to see the child, Messiah. But how did you... It's okay, Joseph. Let them come in. Oh. May we look? presence of the King of Kings. But how did you know? Angels appeared to us in the night. We are simple shepherds, bearing simple gifts. who traveled to see the baby Jesus. Gaspar, Melchior, and Balthazar were scholars, astronomers, and philosophers known as the Magi. They believed the star appearing in the sky was a sign. 
My friends, we approach the city of Jerusalem. And look, we are closer to the star than ever. Perhaps our long journey is finally at end. The Magi met with the High Priest at the Temple in Jerusalem. We believe the star is a sign to the whole world. That's why we followed it all the way from Persia like a beacon in the sky. Can you tell us where we can find the newborn king of the Jews? We come to pay homage to him and present our gifts. The High Priest went to see King Herod to report the news. What's your news, priest? Three foreign men are creating quite a stir at the temple, King Herod. Oh? These men believe a star guided them here all the way from the east. A star? Hmm? Sounds like a lot of poppycock. They claim the star is a sign from God, leading them to a newborn child. The child, they say, is king of the Jews. King of the Jews? King of the Jews. That's what they said? Uh, yes, King Herod. Uh, those are their words. Don't they know Caesar Augustus appointed me King of the Jews? The foreigners claim that the birth of this child is the fulfillment of an ancient prophecy. Prophecy? What prophecy? There are two prophecies. One goes, Behold, the virgin will be pregnant and give birth to a son. And the other? Out of Bethlehem shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Oh, they're throwing around tired old prophecies to undermine my authority, to turn the people against me. But it won't work. Who wears the crown around here? You do, King Herod. And who is rebuilding the Temple of Solomon? You are King Herod. That's right! Prophecy! Ha! Ha, I say. I won't hand over my throne to some ugly little smelly infant because of some half-baked prophecy. What would you have me do, King Herod? Summon these foreigners. I'd like to meet them before these rumors get out of hand. So, I understand you've come to Judea to seek the newborn king. How fascinating. I just love prophecy. Yes, we have traveled many days to come find him. I'm terribly interested in finding this newborn king myself. Uh, yes, uh, if he truly exists. We believe he does. Well, then I must know where I can find him, uh, so I can pay him my own personal tribute. If we find him, we'll come back and tell you where he is. Splendid. Why didn't I think of that myself? God be with you, gentlemen. My lord, shall I send spies to follow them? No, they'll be back. When we find that baby, I'll have him thrown off a cliff. Newborn king. Bah! Priest? Uh, uh, yes, my lord. Deliver a message to the people. What shall I tell them, my lord? Spread the word that this newborn king is an imposter, and these messiah rumors are a pack of lies. Tell them prophecy says the real messiah will come fully grown, riding on a cloud with legions of trumpeting angels attending him. Yes, my lord. Make it convincing. Can you direct us to the newborn king? What newborn king? 
Perhaps we should just ask if there's a newborn baby around. A ah, good idea, Gaspar. The Magi had no luck. By night, they were exhausted and thirsty. So they stopped at the inn for refreshments. Here you are. The innkeeper, you haven't by chance heard about a newborn baby in this area. There's a baby right under the inn, in the stable. A king in a stable? Gaspar, Melchior, look, the star. traveled a great distance to adore the newborn king. These people are here to see the baby. We wish to pay homage to the new king. Isn't quite what I expected. Where else should the Son of Man be born but in such humble surroundings? Do you see it? The child radiates an aura of light. Yes, I see it too. Truly, we behold the Messiah. We bear gifts for the All Highest. In their sleep, the Magi were warned by an angel to avoid King Herod on their way back home. So, instead of returning north to Jerusalem, they headed east. They never told Herod where to find the child. Eight days after the baby was born, he was circumcised and named Jesus, as the angel in Joseph's dream had instructed. As was customary, Joseph and Mary took baby Jesus to the temple with an offering of a pair of turtle doves. An old man named Simeon was at the temple. The Holy Spirit had promised Simeon that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah. Simeon had grown old waiting for the promise to be fulfilled. May I please hold the child? Of course. Now, you may release your bondsman, O Master, according to your promise. In peace. Alas! This child is destined to be the downfall, no less than the restoration of many in Israel. His very name will provoke contradiction, and your soul also shall be pierced by a sword. Simeon had foretold the great sorrow and tragedy to come. The baby Jesus had been chosen to be born in a humble stable. His mother was a poor virgin peasant, and his foster father a struggling carpenter. Simple shepherds came to adore the child, 
and the wise men from their faraway land. And in the holiest place in all Israel, an old man had proclaimed the child as the salvation of the world. was the beginning of many great miracles, joy, and sorrow. The Messiah had been born to a virgin in Bethlehem. An ancient prophecy had been fulfilled, and nothing would ever be the same. <laughs>